again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are, halfway, more than halfway through April. Yay, that means spring's coming. A uh, little bit of snow last week. Yeah. yeah. Today it's is April. 420 for those people who uh, <laughs> Look at me, like, like that. It's also Hitler's birthday for people who don't, don't like, like that. that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's also my friend Carrie's birthday. So yes, happy I birthday, saw, Carrie. Happy birthday, Carrie. I saw that this morning, too. And I was like, where is Carrie Wh- these which days? Is, which is pretty much why I know so much history about 420. Oh, because 420, the joke, obviously. And then the Hitler birthday. But it's all because and it's and Carrie's birthday. There's so. a, a friend, mutual friend of ours, um, Carrie DePhillips. She and... Is she in Amsterdam, Holland? She is now? in Amsterdam, yeah. Holland. Um, she's the CEO of a online. She's a company that does um, social media promotion. Yeah, but she, I mean, she's a PR firm and yeah. a content uh, man, yeah. uh, manufacturer. Anyways, it's fun, and she, guess, her, yeah. and her, her, and her business partner, I think, is Kelly her business partner. I don't know. Uh, I, they, um, they used to work together. Yeah, yeah, and they just basically like decided we're just going to go travel the world. Yeah. And good for them. And they post pictures and you're like, they really are just traveling the world. They're like, just decided we don't need to stay in one place. Well, you know, I mean, it's called digital nomadism. Yeah. And it's basically, I think that's going to be a trend as the mm. world changes. First of all, you know, if, <laughs> if you can't go to the office anymore, nope. why, you know, then you can choose well, where you want to live. I was, like, he, I chose I was to gonna live say, in Dan, Dan's in the same type of boat. I mean, he works for a company that's based out of Northern California. You know, he works for Anthem and he's not... There. going to Anthem. Yeah. He's not even going to Anthem next door here. He's at home and it doesn't, you know, that's not going to change. They don't, there's no reason for him to be in an office. No. And, and, um, once Starlink takes over the world, meaning that we can actually have very low cost internet access yep. all over the world. I think that's going to radically yeah. change. It'll, things ch- as it'll well. keep increasing though. Yeah. Though. So um, it's great. Oh, uh, yeah, gardening has started. Yes, uh-huh. I've got also, what's funny is I, I don't know why I, it surprised me every year. I walked, I was doing the walk yesterday and I'm like, hmm, okay, there's some hosta and don't know what any of that is. And here's some more of whatever that is. Yes, I really, there's, I know in the spring, there's, there is one plant that I, should know by now is a weed because every year it comes up and I think I should let that grow because I'm not sure if it's a weed and it's always a weed. It's not well weeds relative. It's so I went to a, a foraging weed. class a couple of weeks ago and it's the first time I've gone and one of the strange things about being an immigrant is generally when you're a child you learn the flora and fauna if of the you're, country yes. you're in, right? So what's that tree, grandma? What's that plant? What's yep. that, right? So when you immigrate, you're like what is all this? What are these things? So the foraging class is kind of opening my eyes to what these things are. I mean, I've learned because of gardening yeah. and going to garden sales and I can identify a hosta or right, whatever. Right. But, you know, she was taking us from plant to plant. This is a yarrow. This is mullein. Yeah. This is a private little secret stash of black garlic um, that, ta- I mean, the leaves I tasted and I was like, ah, I'm going to, I mean, it, happened to be on a path we yep. go on a lot and I was like mm, I'm not gonna tell I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell, tell anybody where, where that was, is but um no it's down on the sports grounds <laughs> behind you on Varney huh. and um but it's it tastes like like a mixture between onion and garlic yeah. and it would be delicious in a sa- uh, salad yeah. I'm gonna try the dandelion leaves yeah I went dandelions. out and like there's foraged of, my own lawn yeah. there's a lot of <laughs> greens that you know there's another plant that um, I don't know what it's called. It it, 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 I definitely have it. And somebody posted. I think it was Kevin Verbal posted once, maybe two years ago. He's like, um, "This makes great whatever." And I'm like, "Yeah, it makes for great weed. Like, I, <laughs> you can eat it if you want. You can come pick it all day long." Well, out they of my actually yard. say for people who do get seasonal allergies, on top of you know the the wisdom of eating local honey mm. because the honey yep. from the bees, from the pollen, from the trees, from the flowers, yep. you know, so it makes that little life cycle is to eat dandelion yeah. weeds and all the stuff that kind of makes you allergic this uh woman her company's called be well planted mm-hmm. the class was huge i mean there were probably 40 people really? there it was like wow um so yeah that was that was sort of exciting and it's it's nice to be outdoors yes. again it's nice to be able to so, breathe thank you yeah. chris and Nunu for say, lifting I, the mask always, mandate you always have to thank the people even if you don't agree with their policies um thank people when they do the right thing and um governor sununu did lift the state wide mask mandate last Friday. He didn't lift it. He didn't, he let it expire. Yes. Um, and on May 7th, which is just like two or three weeks from now, 
all of those um, state guidelines and restrictions and whatnot so end. That doesn't mean... I had my, somebody say to me, well, that Sununu says you don't have... I said, no, actually, he didn't say any of that. He, he didn't say you should stop, you know, being careful. He didn't say you should stop wearing a mask. He didn't say any of that. No, but, what but he really does, said is we've gotten and spent all the money, and now yeah. we can do what we want. Well, and I, I just, you know, it's important to remind people that, like, people are still free to... If you feel more comfortable wearing a mask, there was never a rule saying you couldn't. Um, if you feel, if you're afraid of eating in a restaurant where other people aren't wearing a mask, then go either to a different find restaurant. a different restaurant or don't go and get takeout. If it if it freaks you out when somebody's in the grocery store minding their own business eight ten feet away from you, going against the arrows on the floor. If that freaks you out and it thinks that you think you're going to die from that, maybe you should get home delivery of your food. But the rest of us are getting on with our lives. I saw a great meme uh, in my feed this morning that was a photo of Fauci 2020 and Fauci 2021. And it said March 2020, March 2020, or April maybe. And it was like, I'd like to see these guys debate each other. <laughs> because, you know, everyone's been different. saying for a year, for a year, Trust the science. Trust the experts. You know what trust the experts means? Just blindly follow? Don't think for yourself. <laughs> right. Like, if you don't want to think for yourself, that's okay. I mean, I, I, I think we could do better. But I don't think anyone, you know, when I get attacked on, attacked on social media, it's constantly like, are you an expert? Are you a whatever? No, I mean, but I read. Well, the thing is, I mean, one of the funny ones, and this will give us a good segue into some right to know police accountability stuff. But I posted some police accountability post last week sometime. Um, oh, it was about the shooting, the police officer in Minnesota who executed someone mm -hmm. and then afterwards said, oh, sorry, I thought I was using my taser. And my point on the thread was, if you are tasked with investigating things and you are incapable of telling the difference between a firearm and a taser, you should not have that job. So that's pretty much yep. what I said. So of course, you know, uh, people are just piling in. You just in. hate everybody. And too. some jerk, came in and he's like, what, are you some kind of lawyer? Do you think you're an expert on this? And I was like, well, actually, <laughs> sir, yes, I am a lawyer and yes, I am an expert on this. And then he actually still came at me for a while and then thank you to all the troopers out there, uh, not literal state troopers, but you know, the, the people fighting behind the scenes. Some guy was posting my CV from my Senate page. This guy had my LinkedIn. Like all these people were like, dude, she is actually an expert. Yep. <laughs> well, and it's, and it is funny. Cause I, like, it is funny to, it isn't funny. It's kind of annoying, but oh, ha ha funny. Um, it's true. You say like, I, I can't tell you since the mandate ended, how many people are just outraged? Yeah. They're just outraged that people are going to be allowed to go anywhere without a mask. And I just, I, I just, it boggles my mind because one, they're not really reading and they literally are follow, fl um, following blindly. I, um, I just read an article yesterday and I had to put it down because I'm like, okay, it's going to make me crazy. I, it was on the um, National Institute for of Health. So we're not talking about crazy right. Jane over yep. here writing in her basement. And it was a whole study on the efficacy of masks and why, what the different, you know, what the purpose of an N95 mask versus a surgical mask and how N95 masks, the wearer, if it's worn properly, it is to protect you from breathing in things. So if you're a scientist working with bugs, you wear an N95 mask because you don't want to breathe in those bug particles. I was like, okay, that makes sense. The surgical mask, because we always go back to, well, doctors wear them and nurses wear them. Yes, a regular surgical yeah. mask, which is often... They also wear them for limited periods of time yes. in a special theater where there is well, air and oxygen pumped in. Exactly. And they... But that isn't meant to stop everything. That is to stop the spittle coming like out of the doc in someone's doctor's liver, mouth you know? but <laughs> into somebody's body. So it, when you, th and they talk about the size of a, the coronavirus particle is so absolutely minute it, that it's the, all these masks that everybody's wearing because we're all just wearing pieces of, everybody's just putting pieces of cloth or it's, whatever. It's, it's literally a placebo. It literally doesn't make, and you yeah, read about it and the, the, the efficacy is so, 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 so small 
that I'm like so. I mean, literally, the 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 most compelling argument for the pro maskers study I could find, independent study, said that it reduced the spread by one point seven percent. Right. So that is like statistically insignificant. I mean, it's, maybe if, if we were you know, actually, you know, maybe it well, made, maybe if the death rate was like ninety nine percent as that, opposed to the survival rates ninety nine percent. I think so. Here's the thing, right? After this whole year, we have these two camps that have sort of been manufactured, right? Like we're just putting people against each other, and someone is benefiting from that, yep. and it's not. Us, it's our friends, me. our neighbors, your community, you know, just going to a restaurant and being mad because someone's not behaving the way you want. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not, it's not healthy no. and it needs to stop. And the way we stop it is freedom is the answer. What's the question? And the thing is, if you want to wear the mask, wear your I don't mask. Think, and, if and, and, you and don't I, want to wear it, don't wear it. It is genuinely that simple. Well, and I get I get equally frustrated with people who are like that are complaining to someone who's wearing a mask. And I think, why do you like if you're in the grocery store and somebody's walking by, I might in my head think, I don't know why you're doing that. But you know what? I don't know why people do half the things they do. So, but like it doesn't matter. It. It doesn't impact me. You wearing a mask, I, I don't care. I mean, stop. So, so the so bottom line is mind your me. own business. How about that? Oh, we'll yeah. make that the mantra. Yeah. But, but right anyways, now, I'm not minding my own business because now I'm sticking my nose in people's business. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, right to know and police accountability. So a quick update for folks back home. So we had those court cases that we won last year. And so we were very excited because instead of it saying it's an exception to the right to know, you're not allowed to know who these bad cops are. The court from the Supreme Court remanded it down to the district court and said, or superior court and said, we have to implement this balancing test. So the balancing test is, is there a privacy concern that outweighs the public interest in knowing in this case, who the bad cops are or who the people are who are, have sustained findings of misconduct that appear on this list. So, Generally speaking, I think the general consensus is there is a public interest that outweighs any privacy concern. I should also add that you don't really have the right to privacy when you're executing public duties in public on behalf of the public, getting paid by the public. You are not a private citizen. You're an employee of us, the taxpayer. And so we kind of should be able to know what you're up to, especially if it involves malfeasance. So. All of that was great. Then the sneaky, sneaky Senate, where all good things go to die, <laughs> were like, oh, we should pretend that we're implementing the Law Enforcement uh, Accountability Commission, the LIAC Commission that Chris Sununu, um, you know, uh, convened last year, and they sat down and they came up with all these reforms, and then slowly, 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 just started watering them down to where we are now. So there was this bill last week, I don't remember the name, uh, the number, but uh, in the Senate that initially I had thought, oh, cool, okay, we're, we're going to figure out how to get the Lori's list and this is going to be great. We're going to have transparency, finally. The morning of, I download a six-page amendment and I'm like, what is That's this? That's a big amendment. <laughs> and I start reading and I'm like, oh, man, what is this? This is some kind of like infinite loop. So. People who are on the list now have an opportunity to get off the list, um, which, fair enough, right? Right. Because what if you're what if you're not the bad cop, but the guy, the chief, is the bad cop, which we can come back to. Which you know, sure. And and but here's the thing: if that's the case, then you could take your case to the public. Let the like, if I was a good cop who was on the bad cop list. At this stage, I even would, where yeah, we I are, I would leak the list and I would come out publicly and I would say, you know what, I'm on this list because you know what, I changed my time card once. But, you, but these guys are on the list or not on the list because they're murdering people. So let me ask you a question though. Do police officers, not chiefs, do the run-of-the-mill cops 
have access to the list. I bet they don't. I no, but I mean, I know that there are a lot of people in New Hampshire you know what who I mean? do like, have that list. I could, I, I'm going to start. I am going to put the list up with the blacked out stuff, yeah. and I'm going to ask the public to start filling, filling in, in the blanks. Because you know what? Maybe there's more than 276, or what the last number currently is, people. So you know what? We could just say Salem, New Hampshire, and be like. Tell us your stories yeah. about your interactions. And you know what? It's probably going to be worse than just, than just the releasing list. the list. So good luck. So here, this is the Littleton police chief has been placed on administrative leave, paid leave, making $92,000. Uh, he's been on paid leave since April 8th. So I'm going to read this paragraph because <laughs> I find it horrifying. Citing exceptions under New Hampshire's right to know law pertaining to municipal personnel, Littleton Town Manager Andrew Dorset declined to say specifically why Paul Smith, the police chief of Littleton, New Hampshire, was placed on leave. If the decision stems from any specific incident, and if so, what the incident was and when, if there is any inf investigation of any kind, and if so, what the nature of the investigation is, the investigating agency, and whether it's ongoing or complete, and whether Smith is expected to return to work as chief, and if so, when. So basically... Now the Stasi called, and yeah. they want their police state back. Well, and I'm thinking, re just listening to you say that, so if you live in Littleton, you are paying nine, this gentleman, and maybe he... Let's go like this. Maybe he didn't do anything wrong. All right, so I will say this. The rest of the article, we can't really tell, but let's say it's a contentious divorce. There's mm -hmm. a dog involved. There are restraining orders from both sides, and it sounds like there was physical violence or threats of violence. Okay. So the people in Littleton are paying this gentleman $92,000 a year. They're continuing to pay at least two weeks in now. $92,550. And please remember, that is excluding benefits. That's just the dollar. There's another $50,000, right. $60,000 worth of bennies on top and of that. And the people in Littleton, not, not Carla and I, I mean, we live in mansions, but the people in Littleton literally don't know why he's on leave, if he's going to remain on leave, if he's expected to come back, or even if there's an ongoing investigation. But also, I mean, to say this is such a slap in the face of the people paying yes. the salary. That's what I'm saying. You're saying you got to pay this. You're continue to obligate. You're continuing to be obligated to pay them and support and pay his benefits and all that. But for me, it's But even, we can't tell you why. We can't tell you if we've decided. But it's even worse than that. The New Hampshire Constitution says in part one, article eight, that first of all, anyone who works for the state, a magistrate, mm -hmm. a police officer, a teacher. a teacher, anyone is a agent of us, yes. which means they should not have more or different rights to any of us, which means anything where they're saying, well, you know, this is special, is actually unconstitutional. Further than that, it also says it should be open, accessible, transparent, and responsive to the people, and that the right to know what our government is doing shall not be unreasonably restricted. Now, my question to folks back home is, do you think it is a reasonable restriction to hide bad actors from us because if you think that is reasonable we have a problem, a problem yes, a huge because problem. you cannot put people in charge to police themselves and then say they're allowed to say it's reasonable to hide anything that makes us look bad yep. from you while also claiming the right to murder us. These people are authorized to use lethal force and they do because here's the names of the six state troopers who executed some poor Vermont dude in a storage unit in Claremont. Now I'm sure we'll get the story. There's always a story. There's with... always a story. So they got two weeks before they were interviewed. Now we know that when we commit or someone commits a crime, you, when I commit a crime, <laughs> when, uh, when there's a crime committed, one of the things you really want to do is you want to immediately talk to the witness. Before you have time to really think through your story. Well, think through your story, come up with, you know, different, what, uh, right? So, 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 
everyone who who understands how law enforcement is supposed to work is like, oh, you're supposed to interview the the witnesses and the people involved as soon as possible. Right. Not not if you're law enforcement authorized to kill people and you kill someone, then you get two two weeks to figure it out. You also magically in this scenario. Not one cruiser camera was working and not one body cam was working. Now, I don't know if they weren't working or, don't or if they didn't have them. I'm pretty sure they weren't working because I have noticed a trend when the AG comes out with their justified killings reports. In New Hampshire, we are yet to find one, one that isn't justified. So, you know, that seems slightly <laughs> suspicious as well, in my opinion. So just so you guys know, so this SWAT team went in and an autopsy determined that Eli, the Vermont dude in Claremont, died of multiple gunshot wounds to the head, neck, arms, legs, and torso. Right, that's not like, hey, I shot the guy because he was charging me. I mean, I don't know what him. happened here, right? No, but but I think he was killed in a storage unit. So, okay. So, shot in the head, neck, arms, legs, and torso. No law enforcement officers or anyone else was injured, but they're claiming he shot first and he shot at them. So Trooper First Class Nicholas Sir, Trooper First Class Stefan Whiskey, <laughs> I'm sorry, Gary Ingram, Shane Larkin, William Nielsen, and Noah Sanctuary. Okay, they've all, they're all state troopers. They've all been in the service for a good, you know, 10 to 15 years. Uh, the involved troopers did not have body or cruiser cameras, the news release says, the press release. Now, we just have to believe this, right? So the interviews were conducted uh, for each of the six troopers the week of April 12th, but the murders took place in March. So at least two weeks went by. So that's where we're at with that one. And... You know, if if uh, I, I'm going to put the website up and I'm going to implore people back home when you have an interaction, good and bad, because here's the thing. I would like to acknowledge and I realize it's not the easiest job. But you know what? We're actually in a situation now where people have mental health issues yep. and we send police and they kill these people. And that is a trend. I could think of at least three or four scenarios in the last two years yeah, where, where it's that been has a wellness happened. check and, 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 and badly. So the question I think we all have to ask ourselves, I don't support a system that says when someone is in pain, suffering, crazy, having a meltdown, somehow not functioning, like there's some kind of dysfunction, the solution to that problem is not to se send people who are authorized to use lethal force to go and to execute those people. Even if the shooting, and I think one of the shootings from last year was justified. I'm pretty sure if a bloodied guy who just crawled out of a basement window covered in blood with a knife was running right. at me. I mean, why we didn't use a t taser? Why don't we have darts that we can shoot at them? Well, if, we can, even, if you can fell a rhino, why can't well, we fell a always, felon? I always was always under the impression, and maybe this used to be, or maybe I was just mis misguided, was that the point of, uh, of discharging your weapon is to stop, you know, to prevent further injury to yourself or others. So, you know, you shoot somebody to take them down. You don't shoot them in the head. Well, the thing is, I think the training now certainly, you know, it's more I, it, it would be, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, people are like, people the police are, are being trained to see us as the enemy. And that is problematic because we are seeing you as the enemy because you do things like the frigging Lori's list and keeping things secret. So if you want to fix the problem, it's in your hands, police officers. It is in your hands, the state, the system. You can actually make this problem better by being open, honest, and transparent and actually saying, you know what? Yes. You guys have a legitimate beef. Let's see if we can fix this. Maybe we have to take those 272 or whatever the number is now officers and be like, you're fired and you can never work again. Tough luck. And then from there, we can figure out how to do it better. But part of the training, I, I want mandatory yoga <laughs> <laughs> for every police officer. And really like de-escalation. Right. And you know, 
The protocols also can't be, well, it's de-escalating to kneel on someone's neck. That's going to go you badly. Did oh. you hear that? So Maxine Waters, in her infinite wisdom, went out there and basically incited violence and said, unless <laughs> this man is found guilty, whether you think he's guilty or innocent is irrelevant at this point. If he's found not guilty, there should be riots. Uh, okay, because that actually is inciting violence. And now the judge came out yesterday and basically told the, told the jurors and told the defense. Oh. She gave you an appeal out. If they find if uh, they find that cop guilty, he ch her actions just gave him an automatic appeal. Well, that and uh, they've called out, I believe, three to four thousand National Guard troops. I don't know if they're all stationed in Min Minneapolis, yes. but I believe some are also stationed in D.C. But Trump was the authoritarian yeah, was military dictator, yeah. right? Because yeah. you don't see any criticism no like literally the exact things that yeah. trump did are being done by the left but it's now. okay now but because now it's not the trump. media is just like ah that's fine. that's okay you know or or we just won't even before you know before we run out of time just because there is something exciting coming up this week um this coming saturday at 1 p.m up at the concord um up at the state house in concord um is the rally to stop critical race theory um lily tang and i can never remember how to say Bo Carolyn something uh, Kelly Bo Chow Kelly um, are part of the organi organizers. Um, but critical race theory is a huge problem that's coming down the chute in government and in our school systems and what and whatnot. So, so the, in a nutshell, the quote I saw about critical race theory said, "In order to end discrimination, we must perpetuate discrimination." Yeah, and that, I'm like, "Look, no, guys, that's not how that works at all." Uh -uh. So that is Saturday the 24th at 1 p.m. at the State House up in Concord. I'm gonna um, go. I'm gonna go as well. Um, I also did wanna. Um, do a little shout out. Sebastian Sharanoff is running for special election. There's a special election for Ward 6 Alderman on May 4th. Um, if you haven't seen stuff about Sebastian, you can check out his website, Sebastian Sharanoff. And I'm going to spell that because it's a mouthful. <laughs> Sebastian, S E B A S T I A N, Sharanoff, S H A R O N O V.com. Um, he did very well. He got like 55% of the vote in the primary, and he's out working hard for the people in Ward 6. So do do yourself a favor. Give him a shout. Give him a look up. Um, I think that's all we got. Wow. Check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, now The Ecstatic Optimist. Uh, it's available on Amazon and on my website, Carla Garrett. And um, mixed bag of weather this week. Get out there. T take advantage of the warm days. Get out there. Take a walk. Um, weed your garden. And this weekend for Earth Day, do yourself a favor, clean up the sidewalk in front of your property. Yes. It'll make your neighbors very, very happy. Yes. Um, that's all we got. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.